right, we are going on a tour of Murano and Burano right now. So we're walking over to basically where we were last night. <laughs> the aisles are, are slim. You can literally see it in the camera. Um, but Ted already knows Venice so well. He already knows exactly where we're going. <laughs> so, famous last words. Yeah, famous well. last words. But um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're walking over there now. Um, yeah, I was saying yesterday that I think it's like all these little streets and stuff like that all like interconnect, so it can be very confusing. Um, but I think once you sort of know like some of the areas, some excuse us, um, you kind of kind of get start to get a feel of where you're going and stuff. So we're passing out over, we're going up and down the stairs. But yeah, are you excited? <laughs> So we were seeing last night that this is the first bridge we've seen that has the accessibility ramps. So the ramps on these bridges, you can kind of see over there at the ramp. We're following our tour guide. They do have steps, the alleys are narrow, and so of course no car in Venice, the city is totally, completely pedestrian. So when you're crossing a bridge in Venice, you're leaving one of the many islands to go to the next one. But Venice is not the only archipelago in, ta in uh, the lagoon, it is the largest one, but not the only one. There are many other smaller archipelagos and many other single islands are scattered amazing. and now we are entering the open southern lagoon you won't see the southern end it is too too far away i told you that the lagoon is really really big so you see a bunch of islands one of them among the trees has got a white building and there is also a, one, a small tower now you can see the, the top of the tower later on in a few seconds you will see it all that white building among the trees was used as a hospital for a very specific disease that was tuberculosis and of course the patients had to be isolated but after using the antibiotics there was no need <laughs> to isolate them and so the hospital was closed and abandoned you know that we have no garage in Venice why should we and so all the garages are on the mainland on the dry land in the countryside in Murano 50,000 people, 50,000 residents in Venice, 50,000, more or less 6,000 in Murano. And the most of the people in Murano, the ones who live in Murano, are involved into the glass making. Many of them are glass makers, so they mix the ingredients, they take care of the temperature of the ovens. Many of them are glass blowers, they blow the glass to obtain some hollow objects such as drinking glasses, vases or very thin layers of glass to make dishes and mirrors. Some of them are glass vendors, some of them are glass glass making and the island relies on that. The island lives on the glass making. Why do we need to come to Murano to visit a glass factory? I told you that uh, the dangerous activities were always located outside uh, the city center. Also, the glass making was dangerous. So in the beginning of our history, the glass factories were located in Venice, but they caused too many fires. And at a certain point, 
the Venetian parliament and the doge decided to remove all the glass factories out of the city to locate them here. They Right now, for the demo, we are still using clear glass. Uh, as you can see, 
where we need to pick up the right quantity of glass, we need to go inside with the working bar, we dip the bar in the interior of the oven where we have the composition, we roll a little bit and we comes out with the right quantity of glass on the bar. Still, a little bit of uh, multicolor section, in this case, the majority of them are just green color, so we will create uh, a mosaic with the just representative technique from our production. We use it a lot on Murano. <laughs> we use for the chandelier production, drinking glasses, vases, uh, decanters, carafe. We use it a lot. We're gonna make a little flower bath right now. We need to blow several times, okay? We don't blow just once, slowly by slowly. In this case, it's not gonna be very quick like the horse making. The other demonstration is gonna be uh, take, it's gonna take a bit longer. In this case, we need to reheat the composition into the oven several times to keep workable the glass. <laughs> we use uh, some tools of work. You will see, you will see, I will have many different tools of work depending on the production and the technique that we are working. Uh, tools are made of metal, like the one used right now. We have tools that are made by wood, like this one here. Depending on uh, the production that we need to do, tools are different. By the way, in Murano, you will never find machine production. Totally handmade. This is very important. Government of Venice wants to keep this tradition alive. Every single piece made of Murano is under the control of the government. It must be done by hand. So you will never find such a piece of It's possible. First part to be done is the base. The side in front of you is the bottom part, okay? When the master decides that the base is finished, with the sheet store, we're gonna cut the piece, we're gonna turn upside down, and we will start to work uh, in the top side. To do that, uh, we need to attach perfectly the piece on the working bar. That is the reason why we're gonna change the bar. We need to use another one where we have uh, the right temperature, must be hot enough to bar, to attach perfectly the piece. This is an important step, otherwise you lose the piece on the floor, and then you have to start the game. So now we attach the piece from the, from the base, we bring it into the oven a few seconds, glass becomes workable again, and we will complete it for the top part. We're going to open it a little bit in the flower bar. Consider here that normally we have a team working. We have seven guys making our chandelier production. All the time there is a master plus assistant. Not everyone is a master. Master is the most important person who decides he manages the entire production. Normally, master sitting here, assistant, he prepare the piece, prepare the tools to work, uh, prepare the decoration, and master completes the entire process of work, okay? Top of the piece, top area, gonna open it. <laughs> Just to pick up the glass from the container, the oven is That is beautiful, isn't it? So normally the real production cools down in 24 hours in the interior of an oven. The piece that we're going to leave outside in the fresh air and crack. So this one here, the piece is going to crack in one hour because the temperature goes down too quick. Look at that.
The, the portion of the foundation underneath is not as solid, uh, was not as solid as the other one. So after being built, the tower started leaning and leaning and leaning until, thanks God, it stopped. So we keep on monitoring that uh, tower, but we know that it is stable. It has already stabilized. Uh, we don't need uh, to fix it. Being fish and swimming are very popular sports. Uh, and so the kids of the island start learning how to row as soon as they can stand up. It's very important to be able to row. Here it is, this is the rowing school on the left hand side with the yellow green frame. But the characteristic that strikes you most. I got a Lean Tower. Lean Tower of Piranha. <laughs> house would you want to live in? <laughs> oh my god, greens or teals. Yeah. I could do a fun like seafoam greenhouse. <laughs> He came right in front of me, and then he had a nerve to have attitude. Get enough attitude from Morocco. <laughs> It depends on the location because if you overlook uh, a nice square and you have a lot of light and sun, it is more expensive than uh, having an apartment in a narrow dark alley. Again, the light pinks are so pretty. I love the vibrant yellows too. Maybe I should just put a line outside of my apartment window on Wallace. <laughs> should I do some laundry? <laughs> so when 
and uh, it belongs to anyone. So <laughs> when uh, you need to refresh your your plaster, <laughs> you can use this one, and you don't pay for it because it belongs to everyone. Community <laughs> library. <laughs> Oh, another pretty yellow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you never see the ladder again, and the ladder will be used in some kind of crime. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> A lot of hustle and bustle here. This area is so cute. Yeah. Refill my water bottle. <laughs> So my dear friends, this is a very nice uh, location to take a picture of the Linian Bell Tower. From here it is uh, impressive. And this is one of the many, many rain cisterns uh, that were built by the Venetians to collect some water. This cistern is underneath you. What a beautiful dress. Again, I need your attention. Hello! We need seven ladies, ten days of work. Mm. There's seven different stitches, every lady does a stitch. Wow. We have to start with design on the paper. By machine, we have to do a guideline. So we have to follow the design just to do a base. With needle and thread, the first lady makes the full part, which is the first stitch, like the lady stitching now. Another lady makes the, the, the net, the finest part. Another lady makes a tiny barret. Another lady makes the flower here. And the last lady with a thicker thread makes a relief, uh, which is the last part. When it's all finished, we cut between paper and fabric. A guideline made before we cut with the razor blade and the lace comes off. Same kind of lace you can see better in frames and upstairs we have beautiful display. If you want you can take a look. All those pretty butterflies up there. Okay, got a little Oreo gelato and a little cup. Tied also that one. I found the ambulance water boat. <laughs> that one's also ambulance. I wonder, I think that one down there is the police one. Like there's little sirens on the top. So this is what you'd learn how to drive if you lived here. <laughs> So my dear guests, so welcome back on board. You see that we are going back a different route. So we'll be here for, for lunch. <laughs> oh, don't mind the lights back there. I cover up the lights. He's having another liter beer. <laughs> 
got some bruschetta and tuna shape pops. Look how cute that is. <laughs> it's like Instagram worthy. <laughs> I got some pasta. I got grilled chicken. <laughs> Seeing like how pretty like the balconies on this building are. They're like all deviled. Mm -hmm. Low fruit market. Yeah. I'm saying you can see this pasta in um, TJ Maxx. <laughs> it's in our 20s too. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a family friendly vlog, everyone. <laughs> One time my mom cursed at the end of a vlog and I was just like, well, gotta cut that out. Little <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty area. It's in the window. <laughs> They're like a chocolate gondola fountain. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it's amazing. We're going somewhere specific right now, but look at Captain Candy. He's so cool. All right, where are we going? Are we going straight still? We're going this way. We're going this way. Look at those pizzas. Look at those pizzas. Which way are we going? This way. I don't know where we are, but this is definitely a very touristy crowded area. We just passed a gelato place that had like the longest line I've seen for gelato, so... Down there? Yeah. The only places that sell sweatshirts and stuff. Oh wow. Oh wait, this is the famous... I know where we are. This is the bridge, the Ponte de... Um, the famous bridge. This one is like burned down a few times. Um, wait, I want to look at some of these little things. Yeah, there's like shops along this bridge, you can kind of see it up there. This is the other side of the Grand Canal. So pretty. This side's easier to look at because it's not as bright over here. <laughs> So many gondolas. We're gonna do a gondola later. We're actually going this way though. <laughs> this is where all the shopping definitely is though. currently walking to the fire department, <laughs> the fire station. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a dork. Yeah. So we're I don't walking even have an excuse, it's just... <laughs> That's kind of funny because we're walking all throughout the city. So real quick, we haven't talked, I think, to the vlog all day anyway. Anyway, though, what did you think of the tour before? Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, what was your favorite part? Definitely watching the guy that had to be in his 70s, just uh, making glass art yeah. like it was nothing. <laughs> I know, right? I said it's almost as if he was like bored, like he had to come in on the weekend to show the tourists. Like but the amount of time and effort that he put into that skill. Yeah. Is, and he just whipped amazing. out a horse from nowhere and as if it was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's definitely video of that. Yeah, so. it took, I should, that should, you should have already seen that if you're watching this in chronological order. Um, but that was amazing. I really liked walking around Burano too because it's really pretty. I feel like photos and a camera doesn't, doesn't quite capture exactly how nice it is. All right, so apparently this is it. Oh, well, it's a Sunday, so obviously it's like closed technically, so. Oh yeah, look up there, Vilia de Fuoco, Morti. Oh, that's very sad, but that's listing some people who have passed away on the job. So pretty. All right, so let it in there. You can't really see in the video, but there is a bunch of boats, and those are the fire boats. Here is a fireman. <laughs> I'm a little further down, but again, it's a bit too dark in there. But there, there, there. 